Hello everyone, uh, Brienne from Pigment here. Today I'm going to be coloring uh, a page from our new book called Famous Art. So I am going to start uh, by using the new uh, Sugar Plum palette. And I'm just gonna really have fun with color and brushes in this one because it's Famous Art. So I'm gonna be using different things. I'm not exactly 100% sure yet, but I'll keep you posted as we go. So let's get started by, I'm going to get some colors, some random colors just kind of filled in here and then I'm going to work through it with what I develop from the background. So that being said, um, I'm going to go to my fill tool. I am going to go to fade. And I am going to turn my opacity all the way up and I'm going to start playing with some color. So I'm just going to drop, hold on a sec here, I want this to be on freehand. So I'm just going to drop this color in, in the corner. And by putting it on freehand, I do this a lot, it allows the color to spread through the whole piece without isolating it in between the lines. And um, that's kind of what I want right now. So I'm just gonna play with color for a bit here. Till I kind of get... I'm gonna try bloom. I don't use bloom very much, so I'm gonna... Very cool. Okay, so I think I got relatively some colors in place there. Now I'm going to switch it back over to automatic mode. And I am going to play with brushes and color and have some fun here. So I think for my first brush, I'm going to play with the oil a little bit here. I'm going to keep my palette the same for now. And I'm just going to play. Got my brush size up. And actually, that being said, I kind of want it back on freehand for this. I'm just gonna brush strokes randomly throughout. We're going to make a Van Gogh-like piece. We're going to play with color and we're just going to have fun with it. I put that lighter color in there but it's okay, it's getting overlapped. I was just checking out. I'm not worried about making this look perfect. I want it to be kind of like um, random brush strokes, like a real painting. I'm getting those layers and colors in there. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to keep on doing that. And I'm actually going to layer this with some watercolor.
I want to get a little bit um, some lighter colors in here so I'm going to look through just want some pinks and oranges too now I actually normally would look up the painting and uh, try to duplicate it but in this case I'm just gonna have fun and do my own thing I'm pretty sure it's Van Gogh so I, I just want to get like an eclectic kind of crazy background going Random colors, random strokes. Uh huh. Let's see, what else can we play with? Pastel brush. In a piece like this, it is just so fun to just play with color and just just go with it so my I'm not worried about my um, opacities and stuff I'm pretty much leaving everything all the way up <laughs> brush size and everything the pastel is taking away from my corners a bit so I'm just gonna get my um, airbrush to tighten up the the corners here. I'm gonna color match that burgundy-ish color. I just I don't want the corners bleeding out. I want them to have a uh, structure. And see like the layers like the oil brush you're almost like you're almost missing it and that's okay. Maybe I'll bring it back and get some more in there. Not such a high opacity, maybe. So there, I'm just kind of adding some random flare, whatever you want to call it, to the picture. I love doing stuff like this because it's just, you don't worry about the lines or anything so much. You just have fun with it. Okay, so I think that's about good for the background. Now I'm gonna kind of go back to automatic. I'm gonna check out my colors, see what I got going on here. I've created so many random palettes based on a picture that I'm coloring. So I like going back and kind of looking it over. Okay, so I am going to go to, I'm going to stay on the watercolor and I put it back on automatic mode. Now I'm going to start filling in um, these clouds.
And I'm just playing with uh, colors here, using the watercolor. That's all I'm using is the watercolor. And then I'm gonna go back to my oil brush and I'm going to use this yellow and I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way up. Well, maybe not all the way up. Actually, maybe not high at all. And then I'm just gonna fill in these circles. Yeah, no, actually opacity all the way down. <laughs> Complete opposite of what I said. And then just going over it with like a almost a raspberry purple color. Opacity is actually all the way down completely. And I'm gonna go over, no, maybe not with that blue. No, I think I'm just actually gonna leave it. And then I'm going to go over to the moon. And I am going to use a dark shade of this light blue on watercolor. Not that it really makes a difference because my brush size is big. I'm going to tune it down. I'm just going to go over these little circles with the watercolor. And same with this circle here, going over it with the watercolor. Then I'm gonna take my green out and I am going to use oil. And I'm going to just color in all this, all this grass with the oil just very sparsely I'm not being neat with it I'm just going on a lighter green going over it and bring a little bit of purple in there I'm gonna get my airbrush. I'm just gonna tighten up these circles a bit. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my oil and I'm going to color match this. I'm just going to get a purple color in, change it back to automatic mode.
and just playing with color. I'm gonna pick up a different palette here. This is the palette that I made. It's actually for the We Are uh, United um, cover. I made this palette. Right now, I would say this is looking pretty eclectic, if you want to say for sure. I'm going to clean it up a bit. But I just wanted to get some random colors to kind of down. I'm just using my airbrush now to um, kind of finely tune some details. I'm just trying a couple things. I just got uh, my yellow on lightest, almost as like a white. Just turned it right down. I'm just kind of going, defining some areas and cleaning up the picture from my splatter disaster. But sometimes it's just so fun to be messy. And that's all I'm doing right now is from all the random colors that I put in is I'm just going to go around to certain areas and just kind of fine tune some details so it doesn't look so crazy. I want it to look crazy but I want it to have some function.
I'm just highlighting uh, these clouds with a light blue on airbrush mode. This is actually a lot of fun uh, to color just because I was just very eclectic and just throwing down colors and having fun with it. I'm not done yet, but I'm just saying it's it's been it's fun so far. So there, I kind of just highlighted those areas so it just doesn't look like a big crazy, you know what I mean, crazy thing that I did. I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to, like, I'm just kind of trying to break up the parts with uh, solid lines, basically, and some of them I'm using highlighting colors, and the, this one here I'm just using, like, a dark green, but I might, 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 might go over it with a highlighting color, which I think I'm going to try right now. Highlighting color is kind of nice because it breaks it up even further because it stands out against the contrast. It's always good to think about what colors you have in behind and what colors you can put up front to kind of break it up and make it stand out. And I'm going to use like this mint green. It almost looks white, really. just to kind of make the hills stand out. this tree a bit. I'm leaving it on automatic mode because I just want the highlights to kind of go in where they want to go in very uh, sparsely. I'm gonna go get a different green here. I want something in between bright and that ah, is a good one. There we go. Kind of going in randomly, 
highlighting the grass here. Okay. Now I am going to get some of these buildings colored and I'm just going to actually use, I'm not going to use the regular coloring, uh, like typical colors for buildings, which would be like gray, brown, uh, blues and stuff like that. I'm just going to pop in some funky colors and just make it fun. So I'm just using yellow right now, I'm on airbrush, I'm on high, high opacity, it's about 11% brush size. And I'm actually, this is where I'm going to pull out, I love the peacock actually, that's a good one to use. It's a lot of bright colors in it just kind of what I want for these houses here. So I'm just going to keep on kind of putting splashes of color until I'm satisfied with the houses. Now I'm going to use a tool that um, they didn't have back in the day when they made paintings, obviously, and it's going to be the plasma brush. And I'm going to use that blue. I'm going to leave everything the way it is. This is about 44% brush size, I guess. And I'm just going to smooth out the edge of these clouds. And then I'm going to get out the watercolor. And just deepen it up a tiny bit. Just using the watercolor to blend the highlighting of the hills there. I have a little bit of a brush delay here. And then is being slow. Okay. And I'm just going to add some, I'm not trying to be like traditional with the colors. Like, yeah, I'm trying to get the greens in there for the trees and the blues for the sky, but I'm also trying to get this, um, little bit of an eclectic feel to the painting. Like it's just, 
using color. Having a bit of a brush delay here. I'm not sure what's going on. So I'm using orange and pink in a tree that would normally be green. And that's okay. So there we go. I'm gonna just deepen it up a bit up here. Maybe, maybe not that green, but maybe this light kind of color. Orange. Freehand. Just kind of get it in there. And this is actually looking pretty painting-like. Then I'm gonna go back to... You know what, I didn't use pencil in here and that just seems like a shame. So I'm gonna grab my pencil and I am going to go to, there we go, Underwater Fantasy, why not? And I'm just gonna pluck some of these blues and I'm just gonna, oh, I wanna make sure I'm off freehand mode right now. Just turning the opacity down just a smidge there. Just gonna get these, work these dark colors in these creases. Uh, put freehand mode back on for a second. Just to get this dark. In here. Okay. I'm gonna go over this moon circle with the pencil tool. I'm going to do the same with these circles. I'm just using the pencil tool to kind of bring texture in areas where there wasn't too much. I'm not sure, like the, there yeah, it's a little bit better. Maybe I'll take it easy on the sky. I think I kind of got mostly what I was going for. And I'm just going to use the pencil tool to highlight some of the edges of the houses with yellow.
using my pencil tool, small brush size, full opacity. Well, I shouldn't say small brush size. It's actually at 42%, so half brush size would be a more accurate description. And I'm going to try something here because my sky, I'm just not digging my sky. So I'm going to bring out my plasma and I'm going to bring my yellow down. No, no, it's not going to work. That's better. Ah, there we go. Now I'm starting to get the look I wanted. Okay. Now these clouds, they're still not quite right. So, time for a watercolor. covered up the plasma I used, but to be honest, I never really cared for it. Maybe just like that. fix up this one circle. I just kind of ruined it again. Okay, so it is actually starting to look pretty uh, painting-like, which is what I wanted. Um, I just got a couple more things I would like to do. I'm going to take my pencil tool out this green, darken it up, and just kind of Freehand it around some of these corners with the dark green with the pencil tool. Just want to get a little bit of depth to the picture here. And I'm going to do the same here. You know, I do a lot of portraits and 
do a lot of uh, grayscales and this is actually really refreshing just to have fun with color. I know I already said that, but it really has been a fun color. And I'm just going to fix the circle up again because I like the way it's overlapping, but I just don't want it over this part. That is my picture, I think. I think I'm gonna leave it as is. I was thinking maybe putting a couple stars in there. So we can try that. And then if I don't like that, then that's gonna be it for the picture. So I just got my laser. And then I'm just gonna make random small dots. I don't want big dots, just random small dots. And I don't like it. I think it looks good just the way it is. It looks very painteristic-y, if that's a word. So anyways, thanks for joining me in my goulash painting. This is Brienne from Pigment. I'm, I will be seeing you again. Have a great day, everybody.